Hey guys, David Syverson back here from Our Lad Scouting Services, Senior Draft Analyst. We are just days away from the 2024 NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis. It's all about the 2024 NFL Draft, pedal to the metal from here until the end of April. The Scouting Combine is going to answer a lot of questions about prospects, and it does always makes us go back and rewatch the film and see if we missed out on something that the Combine exposed either in a positive or negative manner. The first question I want to answer is at quarterback. How do these guys look on an even playing field next to each other? How hard do they compete to be the top dog at the combine? That really does matter to me because that is the trait that I want out of a franchise quarterback, a guy that is so competitive that it almost annoys you. And we just recently heard that Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels both will not work out at the combine. I'm really disappointed by that. Let's look at the past few rookies of the year and ask, did they compete at the scouting combine? CJ Stroud, he competed. Bryce Young did not. Garrett Wilson, he competed. 2021, it was canceled because of COVID. And in 2020, Justin Herbert, he was on the field. He competed at the combine. So why aren't these guys competing? And what opportunities do JJ McCarthy, Drake May, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, even Spencer Rattler, who I expect to have a really good workout out there. What can these guys gain that others cannot by simply showing up and competing? The second question I have is a wide receiver. We're also hearing now that Marvin Harrison, the top wide receiver, is not going to be participating. But we've heard a lot of talk about 1A and 1B or 2A and 2B. When it comes to Malik Neighbors and Rome Dunze that are stacked just under Marvin Harrison. And I'll tell you what. The gap between those guys is minuscule. Can neighbors and or Udunze do something in Indianapolis when it comes to their workout and positional drills to potentially even leapfrog Marvin Harrison? I don't believe that will happen, but I do think what happens at the combine, it could sway some people between Odunze and neighbors in terms of who's going to be that number two guy. Speaking about wide receivers, Johnny Wilson, is he a receiver or is he a tight end? He'll be with the receivers at the combine. He was with the receivers at the senior bowl. I'm still holding on to the thought that he's going to be a tight end in the Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller mode at the next level. 6'6", 35 inch arms, 238 pounds, 83 inch wingspan. You don't see that at wide receiver. And I want to see him run these wide receiver drills. He did not run a wide route tree at Florida State. And this is where it can get exposed. This is something you do want to look for at the combine. Next question up, which running back catches the ball the best? We are not going to see a Jameer Gibbs or Bijan Robinson drafted in the top 15. We may not even see a running back drafted in the top 45 overall. But they're going to go, they're going to go hard on day two. What order they come off can very much be about the passing game. The running back position has obviously been devalued by the NFL. It is a passing game, and you want these running backs to be an extension of the passing game, not just bruisers between the tackles. And lastly, let's give the big ugly some love here. The combine matters for these guys as well. It's always funny watching these guys run 40, and you're just kind of shaking your head and saying, why are we watching these guys run in tights up and down the field? They almost never do it, but it is a display of athleticism. There's two things I look for. And one of them is going to be about positional changes. We already know that Graham Barton, the tackle from Duke, is going to move inside at the next level. He was going to play center at the Senior Bowl, but he did not play there. He's still uh, coming back from an injury. But names like Troy Fotanu from Washington, Jordan Morgan from Arizona, Talise Fuaga from Oregon State. I want to get these official measurements, even though we have a few of these guys from the Senior Bowl, because sometimes the size – puts the writing on the wall that they're going to move inside. And I also like to see how they do in certain position drills because there are certain movement traits that I like to see at guard and tackle respectively. And if we see one stand out uh, in one area and not so much in the other, this could kind of sway a team to push them inside or outside based on how they perform there. So those are my offensive questions that I want answers to this upcoming weekend. Give us a, a look back on our YouTube channel. We'll throw some shorts out there if we see something notable that we want you to know about. Thank you, guys.